You're not doing it for money. You're not doing it for, I mean, you have to be inspired to be propelled to move forward and evolve. Without inspiration, you're just an amoeba going in no specific direction. That inspiration piece talks to, I think it speaks to the idea of like, you know, we have less resources in communities and so you have to be compelled and propelled to mm -hmm. do, to put your energy into creating these things that the community needs, you need that inspiration and that drive. Well it's passion, like you, you, don't, you don't do it for money, you don't do it for anything other than a passion for a certain way of living, a certain connection to nature, whatever the reason is that you're there, it's, it has to be passion fueled or there's, why are you there? Like, or you can just sit in your house and not do anything, but generally people in arts and culture and doing um, non-profit work or just being in a small town are there because they're passionate about the space, the being, and need to be constantly fueled on that level. Not just nature, but also in a friend that just got back from New Zealand said that their towns were really dying and they didn't they couldn't figure out what it was. And the two things they did was public restrooms and public art. And they put them all over the small towns. And now it's like this huge tourist boom because people need to go to the bathroom and they need inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. First of all, what, what do you value or what draws you to the uh, the people, the community. I think community is actually something that we um, were really far removed from. And I think in cities we're quite isolated. We don't actually have connections. And that to me is our saving grace in this crazy world. Is we, we are able to be connected in a community. If shit hits the fan, it doesn't matter how well you get along, you're going to look out for each other because you know each other. What do you feel like challenges well, economically, we have very, very small markets. Um, we don't have as much income coming in. We have to kind of um, look at all sorts of different angles, whether it's tourism, um, industry is a large part of our economy, so then resource extraction. Um, so to keep the economy thriving, to keep it viable to live in our small communities, we tend to have to either find super creative ways or compromise some of our values, such as allowing for resource extraction. Um, because we don't have the market base, because we don't have a big city center to draw from. So any economy operating here is pretty challenged. I'm not challenged by being far from a city. I love being far from a city. Don't care to be near cities, so that's fine. Uh, most policies that govern us are written for large cities, though, and for the global market, not for small-scale markets. So they're quite um, inhibiting to actual conducting market activity that's good. Um, I was going to say farms at first because I love farms, but actually a vibrant front street. Any town I go through, if the front street has got like the dust balls rolling down it and boards and not very interesting, I'd say it's probably not very vibrant. That's just kind of the front picture, like a vibrant front street that's active with people and nice view and aesthetically pleasing, I think says a lot about a community. What do you think would lead to that? A viable downtown economy the economy being robust enough or at least supported enough by its local residents to, to support it to be that and policies and local government that's also supportive of that you know taxes that are reasonable um, and supportive to uh, a downtown core that operates well and not having big box stores out on the highway you got a big box store on the highway there's no reason why you're gonna come downtown to buy your food so I think that's the other factors when you come into a town that's outskirts. I've seen it in the town I grew up in in Ontario where we used to have this really awesome downtown. It was all heritage stone buildings. It was beautiful. And now it's empty and it's Canadian tires and Costco's all out in the what used to be the farmland. It's ugly and you end up with this like hole in the middle of town. So, yeah. Thank you so much.